we see how all those layers. All the layers, yeah, yeah, amazing, yeah, and it's specifically tuned for the infrared part of the spectrum. You remember the spectrum, so you have like visible light, right? We Roy G. Biv, right? If you want to remember it, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Those are the parts of the spectrum we can see, but there's light outside of this. There's like beyond the violet, there's ultraviolet. That's where, how you get that. And below the red is infrared, not visible to the human eye. By the way, insects can see ultraviolet. We can't. That's oh. why bug zappers work. You put a UV light in a bug zapper, the, the, the bugs say, oh my gosh, I love ultraviolet. And then they get zapped. And we're old enough to remember before there were bug zappers, you'd had a, a picnic bulb for, uh, for twilight picnics. And it's like a yellow bulb, kind of yellow amber bulb. It was a bug bulb. It was sold as bug bulbs. It's not that they repelled bugs. It's that the bugs couldn't even see it because their whole vision is shifted towards the ultraviolet. Oh. And it leaves out the deep red. Yeah. Oh. So it's that's evidence we're smarter than bugs. <laughs> that's <laughs> one we, piece. <laughs> luckily. <laughs> that's one piece of evidence that we're smarter than bugs. So just to, to bring that to a closure, uh, the, the earliest forming galaxies in the universe – um, radiated a lot of ultraviolet. So you might say, well, let's get an ultraviolet telescope. No, because 14 billion years later, the expansion of the universe has redshifted the ultraviolet into the infrared. Oh. So if you want to see the birth of galaxies, you got to know what they look like in the here and the now. And in the here and the now, it's in the infrared. So this is a telescope specifically tuned to see galaxies born at the edge of the universe. And infrared also allows you to see deep into gas clouds. Now, when they're showing you an image like this. So right this, here, this is the Pillars of Creation, which were so named at the time Hubble first attempted this. We were gaga over the Hubble image of this. And now, like the, the JWST, oh my gosh. For those who are more prone to religion, some have called this the hand of God. Because if you look at the pillars, um, you can kind of picture like a, you know, a thumb and uh, fingers. You know, fingers. Yeah. So, but, but regardless, this is nearby. This is the telescope peering deep into gas clouds that otherwise would enshroud what's going on. And you get to see stars being born, planets being born. And so what's remarkable about JW, JWST is that to be tuned for the edge of the universe and the birth of galaxies is the same properties you would want to see the birth of stars. A star is born right in front of your nose that would otherwise be cloaked by gas. And infrared penetrates those clouds and enables you to see it as though the cloud isn't even there. And you already know this because when, if you're driving through fog, okay, you put on your fog lights. The fog lights are not blue. They're like reddish, amber, okay? That improves your ability to see through the fog. If we could see infrared, that's the kind of light you'd use, then you wouldn't even know the fog was there. That's why self-driving cars will be amazing. It won't matter if it's foggy. They'll be able to see everything. Just give them infrared sensors. The fog is irrelevant. They can dr drive 100 miles an hour in dense fog, and all the cars will see each other. And they want to change lanes. They tell other cars, I'm going to change lanes. They'll part for them, open up, and we won't get 40,000 deaths a year, as we currently do, from automobile accidents.